What Denel is suggesting is that ancient hominins didn't just pass through Savannistan. Some might have evolved there. It implies that we are missing a huge amount of the story of human evolution in Asia. That creatures got out of Africa very early uh, without us knowing the record uh, of, of their evolutionary history. And they then spread widely outside of Africa. If this scenario is true, wouldn't these earlier ancestors have left some sign of their existence? Trying to find them has proven to be exceedingly difficult. But we need to find those remains if we're to work out exactly how the Hobbit got into its present state, how it evolved over time. But the crucial evidence Roberts is hoping for may have already been found. On the western fringe of Asia, at Dimanisi in Georgia, a new discovery supports the idea of a hidden Asian lineage. On the grounds of a medieval village, there's been a find to rival the one on Flores. Here, archaeologists found a trove of surprising fossils. Fossils which David Lord Kipanitsa believes also shatter past notions of the human exodus from Africa. This is a unique place where we could learn a lot of about human evolution. The chapters we never can imagine to learn even. Over the past decade, Lord Kipanitsa has discovered five unique skulls from what appears to be a colony of early hominins. And just like the hobbit, they are small, with small brains, too. This is the original Dumanesi skull. It was a very big surprise when we found it. It's very small, with a very teeny brain capacity, if we will compare it with modern humans, they are much more primitive. It has brain capacity, 600 cubic centimeter, than modern humans have, more than 1,500. So this skull is a first human ancestor out of Africa. They are oldest human ancestors in whole Eurasia. The Dimanisi skulls are much older than the Hobbit, each at least 1.7 million years. Given this expanse of time, is it possible they belonged to an ancestral species which evolved into others, including the Hobbit? This skull belongs to the hominid who could be possible ancestor of the Homo erectus and Flores too. It raises all kinds of questions about where the human line began, and it could be used to support the idea that, that humans originated outside of Africa. Again, a very challenging idea. But not out of the question, given how little we know about our past. You see, the fossil evidence we have from Asia for the first million years or so of our existence would more or less cover this table, but a little more. And if we go back to two million years ago, or beyond that, we have absolutely nothing from Africa's neighbor, which is Southwest Asia. So who knows what was living outside Africa about two million years ago? Dimanisi may be the evidence that makes sense of the Hobbit. If nothing else, it proves that Asia was once a habitat for little hominins. We could say that human evolution was not just simple stride highway. It was very complicated, it's a very exciting story. And uh, Flores and Manisi both are bringing new questions. The finds at De Manisi in Georgia are, are remarkable and they just go to show everything that's true about paleoanthropology which is you find the most unexpected things in the most unexpected places. Although questions about our origins seem endless, in Paris one of them may soon be answered. 
In honor of Morewood's find, the Museum of Mankind has commissioned sculptor Elizabeth Danes to reconstruct the Hobbit based on the latest forensic techniques. We may not be the first modern humans to have seen what the Hobbit looked like. For if Morewood is right, humans and hobbits shared this planet for thousands of years and may have met countless times. Just as the folk tales of Flores report. And who's to say there are not other surprises awaiting us? The world is full of undiscovered hominids, and um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if somebody sent a paper to nature saying they'd found one alive somewhere in Sumatra or Vietnam or somewhere. I would be very, very excited, but I wouldn't be at all surprised. The Hobbit challenges our preconceptions in so many ways. We're still very much at the beginning of the story. I think the best is yet to come. For nearly 80,000 years, the hobbits flourished on Flores. They were tremendous survivors. You've got to admire their longevity. And, and it's still, a, it's still a, a moot point as to why they went extinct. I mean, what finally put the death knell on the hobbits? We still, we still don't really know the answer to that question. Most likely, a volcanic explosion wiped them out, leaving us, Homo sapiens, alone on the planet. Back at Liangbua, Mike Morwood and his Indonesian colleagues are planning new excavations. And they've identified other promising sites to explore. This will stand in the Southeast Asian archaeology on its head and will yield other spectacular discoveries of a similar magnitude to homothorosensis. Of that I'm certain. And if more evidence is found, establishing beyond doubt that the hobbit is a new species, what will it mean? If this is a deep and separate lineage, then it confirms the complexity of human evolution. And what's most fascinating here is that most of those very early experiments vanished two million years ago, and they evolved into other things or they went extinct. Here we've got something which may represent that very early stage of human evolution. Uh, going its own separate evolutionary way, maybe for two million years. So it's, it's a quite incredible story. And it shows that nature, in a sense, was experimenting with how to be human. <laughs>